Hi, this is Brian Kim. I'm going to share with you case number 35 in the best way to do cataract surgery series. This is a moderately dense lens and after I remove the first half, you're going to see I'm having trouble rotating the second half. And this is despite good hydrodissection and spinning of the lens. And so you're going to see an easy way to mobilize the lens. And I will show you, in my opinion, the best way to do cataract surgery in the most efficient and safe way possible. So I'm using a corneal marker to help me center and size my erexis. And then I'm going to use a Q-tip to turn the eye. I'm going to make my paracentesis incisions inferiorly and superiorly. I want to make sure my paracentesis incision is parallel to the iris plane to give me a nice self-sealing corneal incision. I'm injecting some intracameral lidocaine. I'm going to inject some intracameral dispersive viscoelastic. And I use a cannula to hold the eye, and I'm turning the eye. I'm going to do my triplanar corneal incision. I make a vertical groove. I place the blade into the deep part of the groove, tunnel through the cornea, and then dive down. And that's the triplanar corneal incision, made easy by using the cannula to hold the eye. This is my puncture style capsular rexus. I'm gonna puncture with the teeth of the forceps, pull downward towards my incision, and then create a flap on the right side. I'm going around circumferentially, grabbing and re-grabbing, making sure I'm trying to stay within the corneal marks, which will help me to center and size my rexus. I like to burp some viscoelastic after my dumyrexis to help me with the hydrodissection. This is my capsular fornix hydrodissection technique. I place the cannula out to the contralateral equator, point the cannula tip down, get a nice fluid wave. I'm sweeping on the left side. I'm trying to turn the lens on the right side. You can see it's taking a little bit of effort and then gently, and again, this is gently, I'm gently turning the lens. You can see the lens is spinning but it did require a little bit of effort to do so. I begin the FACO, irrigate the surface of the eye, and then with irrigation off, I'm lifting the corneal incision to minimize decimase trauma. I'm gonna remove the surface epinuclear material, place the chopper under the epinuclear ridge out to the capsular equator, turn the phaco tip vertically, sub-incisionally. I'm able to crush the lens with the chopper and the phaco tip. This is double chop. I place the chopper out to the contralateral equator, crushing it, pulling it towards the center, towards the phaco tip, and that crushes and divides the right hemineucleus. You can see that first quadrant just popped out of the bag, and so I'm using mechanical fracturing forces to sandwich and crush the lens between the chopper and the phaco tip. I'm placing the chopper out to the equator again, with a modified cross chop technique, crushing the right hemineucleus in half, and this mobilizes the lens pieces. Again, I'm crushing the lens with the chopper against the phaco tip, and then using high vacuum and a little bit of ultrasonic energy. You can see here, I'm trying to rotate the second hemineucleus. It is not really moving very well. Rather than trying to use brute force and traumatize the zonules, instead, I'm going to come out with the chopper, put some viscoelastic into the eye, and then pull out the phaco tip. And then I'm gonna use my right angled hydrodissection cannula. I'm going to go up underneath the anterior capsular rexus edge, and then just gently start to hydrodissect the lens again. You can see the lens is actually prolapsing centrally as I do this re-hydrodissection technique. I'm gonna lift the incision again with the chopper, go in with the phaco tip, and now you can see the lens is quite mobilized. I'm trying to turn it, but it's not really turning still. And rather than turn the lens against the zonules, I just grab the lens with high vacuum, pull it up, and then I was able to chop the lens in half. I'm using mechanical fracturing forces, using high vacuum and some ultrasonic energy to remove the lens pieces. Again, I use high vacuum to prolapse that fourth quadrant up, and then I'm able to chop it by placing the chopper around the lens piece and crushing it against the phaco tip. 
And again, I'm using mechanical fracturing forces, using the chopper to crush the lens against the Faygo tip, using high vacuum and some ultrasonic energy. Trying to find the edge of the epinuclear shell with the Faygo tip. And as I do this, I'm able to get around the epinucleus with the chopper, which helps loosen the epinuclear material. And you can see, despite good hydrodissection, this epinucleus as well as the endonucleus just didn't want to come out. Once all the epinucleus is removed, I take the chopper out, push BSS with a cannula, remove the phaco tip, and then switch it with the INA handpiece. And this is my way to try to maintain some level of chamber stability. I'm starting to remove the cortical material on the cortex setting. I'm going underneath the anterior capsular rexus, sweeping side to side, but I'm using fairly low vacuum because I don't want to accidentally grab the capsular bag. You can see this is a fairly clean bag. I'm really going around just to be thorough. I'm also removing the lens epithelial cells. You can see I switched to the polish mode. Now I'm removing the cortical material from the posterior capsular surface with the port down with this polymer tip. I'm able to be very confident and remove all of that visible lens material on the posterior capsular surface and sweep the anterior capsule as well. I'm using a BSS cannula through the paracentesis going into the subincisional capsular fornix and I'm pulsing BSS. You can see there's cortical material that's liberated doing this technique. You can certainly do a bimanual INA, but this is an extra step. You'll have to remove and switch instruments. For me, this is just an easy way to get to that subincisional cortical material. I'm pushing cohesive viscoelastic to inflate the bag, and then I'm going to start using the capsule sweep to sweep on the left side, removing the lens epithelial cells on the anterior capsule rim, and then switching and sweeping on the right side. Again, I'm removing the lens epithelial cells on the anterior capsule. You can see that fairly clearly there. Using the sweep to hold the eye and then inject the single piece acrylic lens into the capsular bag. And then while it's unfolding, I quickly switch to the INA. I'm loosening and disassociating the leading and trailing haptics from the optic. I rotate the lens 90 degrees clockwise and I tilt it in such a way that I'm confident that the lens is entirely in the bag. I'm removing some of this adherent cortical material that's on the posterior capsular surface here in the subincisional area. I'm just being very careful to make sure that I use very limited vacuum as I clean that part of the bag there. If you're not confident in your foot pedal control in this situation, it's better to switch to the polish mode to remove that small amount of cortical material that's there. Once I clean the bag of all the viscoelastic, I begin to polish underneath the anterior capsular rexus rim again. There is still a small amount of lens material that's remaining after I did the capsule sweep. I'm going around underneath the lens. Again, I see some fine lens material that's adherent to the posterior capsule surface. That's why I went under the lens to do a little bit more polishing. When once I'm done with that, I'm removing all the viscoelastic in the anterior chamber. I'm pushing BSS into the angle to make sure I don't have any more dispersive viscoelastic in the anterior chamber. I come out with the INA and then I hydrate my incisions. You can see in this case, that the lens was fairly stubborn and would not turn. And so rather than ripping zonules and being frustrated and using a lot of force, it's better to just rehydrodissect the lens. And you can see the lens was able to mobilize fairly easily. And then using high vacuum, being able to pull the lens up and then doing mechanical fracturing forces to minimize any significant ultrasonic energy use. You can see there is a well-centered lens with 360 degrees overlap, and that's the end of the case. So I hope this was helpful to you.
and I thank you for your attention.